The CSIRO has revealed that the plunging cost of batteries and solar means this is the only option. Renewable energy is so much cheaper than coal. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Last year in the United States, where renewable energy is actually considerably more expensive than Australia, about 94% of all electricity added to the grid was renewables. Australia is going down the same path. The plunging cost of battery storage has ensured that integrated renewables remain by far the lowest cost for new build generation in Australia. While the Western world's small, first small modular reactor contract has confirmed the CSIRO's view that nuclear is by far the most expensive form of energy. It's extremely, extremely expensive. Now, some people are saying, well, what about, what about the cost of nuclear in China? Well, for one, China is adding very, very little nuclear in comparison to the renewables that it's adding. But unfortunately, the cost of nuclear in China is far lower than anywhere else in the world. And the rest of the world hasn't been able to match those numbers. So nuclear remains extremely, extremely expensive. All of this is despite inflationary pressure on civil construction works and the additional costs of worker camps for large wind projects that have been included in the CSIRO's calculations for the first time, adding around 4% to the cost of wind energy. And it's similar for solar. Overall wind costs have increased by around 6% in the last 12 months in Australia for that key reason, even though wind in, well, the actual cost of the wind turbines themselves has come down. But capital costs for solar PV, driven by falling costs of the panels and the modules in China, has fallen by 8% for the second consecutive year. The big mover, though, was battery storage, also driven by the plunge in the cost of battery cells themselves in China, and its capital costs have fallen 20%. A 20% fall, it was already incredibly, incredibly cheap from these cost reductions over the past few years. An additional 20% decline last year is going to make a huge difference to the number of batteries actually deployed. Importantly, the cost of its major competitor, gas, that's the major competitor to batteries, has soared with the price of gas turbines increasing by 11% following increases of 13% and 14% in previous years. And gas turbines are quite difficult to actually get because of a lack of supply and strangely strong demand around the world. The levelized cost of electricity cost range for variable renewables, the LCOE, solar, PV and wind with integration costs is the lowest of all new build technologies, the report confirms. The lower end of the cost range of gas generation is also competitive. Black coal and gas are high emissions technologies, which if used to deliver the majority of Australia's power supply are not consistent with Australia's current climate change policies. And they're also more expensive. The problem with gas, though, is massive for Australia. Given the government's and many regulators' attachments to the technology, says reneweconomy.com.au, and in light of the growing competition from battery storage. It's hard to get a gas turbine, and we looked at our projections, which had gas improving, and we just don't think that's realistic, CSIRO economist Paul Graham said, who leads the team that, complies, that compiled the latest report. He said to reneweconomy.com.au, so we put a pause on any cost reductions in gas turbines in the next three years until we actually see that global manufacturers catch up with demand or vice versa. Graham says the addition of the cost of worker camps is a significant one given the shortage of accommodation in remote projects and concerns have been raised by multiple councils over this issue. It's less of a problem for solar projects because you can build them closer to places that have sufficient co common accommodation and workforces, said Graham. So this is just an onshore wind specific issue that had to be tidied up. 
Renew Economy says the other major change since the draft report was released in late December was the increase in the discount rate to 7% from 6% in line with existing practices at AEMO and the recommendations of Infrastructure Australia. Now, I should mention that this makes all capital costs more expensive, particularly in those technologies where capital costs are high and running costs are low. It moves all of the numbers slightly upwards, said Graham. And so if anyone wants to make a final comp comparison, all these numbers are slightly higher than they were in the consultation draft. The bottom line, though, is this. Integrated renewables are the lowest cost, cost option for Australia and for much of the world, as multiple reports, including from Lazard, the IEA, the International Renewable Energy Agency, all say as well. They're all saying the same thing. What's interesting is the new dynamic where solar and battery costs are falling fast, whereas wind costs aren't really changing. And the technology is facing more difficult planning and social license issues. A lot of people don't want wind farms near them. So solar and batteries are doing great, as you know, Graham says. That's not a cause for complete celebration because we still need wind in the system. Most electricity modeling will say you still need both, you need both wind and solar. So I won't be completely happy until we see wind costs turn around and post some reductions, but we are not there yet. Now, here's the thing. The AEMO, basically the Australian Electricity Regulator, was asked, can Australia's grid be 100% renewables? Is that actually scientifically uh, feasible? And they said, absolutely. We don't need fossil fuels of any kind whatsoever. They're completely unnecessary. However, one thing I don't agree with in this report from Renew Economy is the, ne the need for wind in the system. Now, I understand why having wind in the system is often ideal, but I don't think you actually have to have wind. I mean, I don't see the scientific reason why you have to have wind now, don't get me wrong, we do have wind farms and I'm not saying we shouldn't keep those. They're great. But I don't think we need to necessarily add any more wind to the network. I think adding solar and batteries predominantly or at least for at least 95% of the additional energy we're going to add to the grid here in Australia in order to get rid of these coal power plants is the best option. Now, I get you might have to build out a bit more solar to make up for the intermittency and maybe even make the batteries a little bigger. But I actually think that might be the better choice. Guys, what are your thoughts? Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye-bye.